So the first person that put their hand up was Carol Froelich Hole. This is spot on for me. Um, I have, I'm like a monkey and you see the shiny object. Yeah. And um, I've always worked from home for over almost 30 years. So this is not new for me. Um, I start out really well and I'm getting much better at turning off the outside distractions with an autoresponder or sometimes it's just me hitting my phone. I yeah. have already in there, can't talk now and whatever. But um, there are times when I kind of crave the distraction mm -hmm. and um, I tend to lean in that, like I'm focused, but then I'm exhausted and then I like, I like hungry for that phone call to come in because I am a people person. And, and then I have two, one major, and I don't want to call her a distraction because she's the love of my life. I'm the full-time care taker a companion for my 94 year old, very active, healthy, still driving, living independently mother who lives about two miles from me. However, she is on technology and she's always having a problem with her computer or with the phone. Yeah, yeah. And I'm the one she calls and I'm getting much better at if it's not an emergency, can we do this at another time? However, because she is my mother or when it's my adult children, you know, those people I do, it's hard for me to turn off from them right at that time. Do you have any suggestions around 100%. that? I do. I have a wife and she sounds like your mother. <laughs> <laughs> so this is one of those individual things. And this is great. Uh, so the couple of things that I found, there are times my wife isn't awake and I am. My wife is a night owl. She will stay up till one, two in the morning. She doesn't like to get up until like nine or 10. I'm up at five, 5.30 every day. I get a good solid three, four hours to work on the things I got to work on. However, when she gets up, I actually like spending time with her in the morning. I'm in a good mood. She's in a good mood. And so I, I get to spend time, like literally we take the kids to school. They get up at seven. I do some work till they're ready to go. 7.50, I get out of the house. I'm back by about 8.15. We hang out for between 30 to 45 minutes. Then I get into my day. And, and I rock and roll, but I've also already got stuff done well before that. So in that window of time, oh, go ahead. You got your thing. Um, mine is different. My mother doesn't live with me. And oh, her time, no, she lives about two miles from me. And okay. she, her time is not my time, her schedule of getting yeah. up. You know, she's having Perfect. breakfast when we're having lunch. And so yeah. it's, it can be very erratic. And yeah. I have gotten much better at not, reacting to her reaction to something. And I first thing I've learned to say is, is it urgent? And she knows I'm building my kingdom now. Yes. So uh -huh. she respects that she's my biggest right. hero. So right. I don't have that availability. But what I'm hearing from you is for me to be able to say, Mom, this is a block of time that I am free. If you're free, let's that's a good have way. That conversation. That's definitely and a good way to do it. Yeah. And the thing is on top of that, even so it's like if she, if you're, you know, say her lunchtime is that time, you actually do have that window. And because she's not there, you, you kind of could probably give you an idea somewhat of when she might be awake. So you work at home knowing the phone call probably isn't going to come in during this time frame. It could be five in the morning. You may have to adjust to build, right? Make that small sacrifice. And it may mean you have to get up a little bit earlier, adjust the clock. But if you know, like, hey, mom's not calling usually until like 11 o'clock. All right, I'm going to get up and get really good focus work done in this window. Now, my brain's like yours. I do have windows built in of like buffer and breathe work. I got to get up and walk around because if I don't, then my brain, it actually, it's more taxing to try and think about having to think, right? So I want to get up, go around, walk outside, go do stuff and shoot. I'll literally go in the backyard and shoot hoops by myself. I'll just do things because my brain's off. Come back. I'm dialed in again, right? But you do it first. I think you should find that time when mom's not awake. Work at that time when she is awake. Have some time with her. Give yourself the gift of spending time non-guilt, you know, guilt-free yes. time. And then from there, hang out and say, hey, mom, I'm going to go do some work. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be able to now about two hours. Give me two hours to work. Then and then there's a, part, there's a part two to this. I'm really quick. And I'm oh, sure we got to be real quick, real quick. Yeah. All right. Technology issues. You're doing it. You're feeling focused. And all of a sudden, yep. the, 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 the computer isn't working right or that software uh, isn't yeah. working right or the phone isn't working right. And you have a technology glitch. It happens yeah. all the time. That's oh, yeah, yeah. Sucker. 
Yeah, that, that's no fun. Uh, so what I would do is I would choose the things that are more reliable, right? If you know Zoom works, like the, I wouldn't test a whole bunch of new stuff. And then also uh, you make it to a point where like you choose to do things that like if it's a consistent thing in an area, like not even use digital stuff. Like if it's writing, I'm gonna write on a piece of paper. You can, there's actually something called a rocket book. You can write on a piece of paper, take a screenshot, it'll pop in the notes. There, then there's not a matter of having to do much besides just, I gotta take a picture, pop it over, right? It does, it kind of, it happens. Technology isn't always the funnest, but it called? Uh, it's called rocket book. Okay. And then also you can hire someone as a tech person. So if you're like, hey, can I have you as like a off the, you know, when I need you, kind of reach out real quick and have you do some tech stuff, reach out to someone. I have a guy on my team, Andrew, who does that. When things don't want to work and I don't want to fix them, he does because he gets money for it. <laughs> so that's how it works. Thank you. My man, John, how are you? Thank you so much for another fantastic session. Since the day that I met you in Influencer 2019 in San Diego, you've been encouraging me and inspiring me to make shift happen. Um, I'm in a fortunate position where shift has happened. I'm living my life's work. I'm doing my life's work. I do still have goals on the cards to create the online course, to write the book, and, and also be a great father. So I'm serving these amazing clients around the world. I want to be a great dad. Um, and I've got these, you know, uh, not conflicting priorities, but just loads of priorities. So yeah. um, share a little bit on priorities, on juggling, on serving as the highest and best uh, version of yourself in all of these different areas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, just so you guys know, I have three kids. I have a 16-year-old who just got his driver's license, which is a very weird dynamic. I got 11-year-old twins. Uh, I have a wife that has multiple businesses that I am like the handyman for. I'm a very, I built this whole studio. Like I'm a super weird, I'll fix your car. I'll build a website. I'll seriously, it's weird. I cannot. I'm not even joking. I can in, input a, and in, install a brand new car stereo in your car right now. It's just weird. The things I can do. But I say that because on top of all those, I have a business where I'm writing a book. We have an app coming out. I'm here coaching with you guys. I just got back from T-Mobile last week, streaming the, I think 80,000 employees they have. I'm doing a lot. However, I got a really great rhythm for it all. I'm very present with my wife. I'm very present with my kids. I have the business running and here's what I do. I realize that uh, I have, we all have these big eyes. Like think about eating food. There's a big pot of food. We do is we take all the stuff out of the pot and we put it on our plate. And we say, I got to eat everything on the plate right now. And the truth is you don't have to eat everything on the plate right now. There are certain things that need to go back in the pot, right? So what I look at is I said, a big overall picture. And those of you guys who may know some of my story, I got to a point where my wife and I got divorced. Um, I had a lot of focus on the professional world and I was doing that thing and I wasn't president as a father. Everything fell apart. I got divorced and I had custody bouts. We got all that. And then we're now remarried after three years of divorce. We're four years deep in an amazing marriage. And the reason it works is because I understand all the things you're talking about. And the way that I do it is I have a very specific process. One, you guys got to get a planner. If you don't have Brendan's planner, get a high performance planner. I think I have like three because every time I see him, he gives me like five more. I, think I, can't, I can't give him away fast enough. Um, but get a planner. Here's the big thing. Don't just get a planner. Learn to plan. Like learn how to plan. And here's what I always tell people. It's a simple process. Figure out what are the core projects, John. And then as I look at them, I do what's called a project deconstruction process. I open up the project and say, how many hours is this going to take? And I, I first do this. I want to take a look if I'm launching a podcast. Okay, how long is it going to take to write the intro, to record the intro, write the outro, record the outro, find the music, make the, uh, you know, the, the image. Um, how am I going to launch this thing? What platform is it going to go on? How, many, how long is the episode going to take? How long will it take to edit the episodes? I take all these little pieces and go, okay, great. If I want to launch that, it's going to look like, now nah, let's call it a 15-hour project, right? 15 hours. Now, I'm not going to do it in one fell day. I'm not going to do it all in one day. But I take 15 hours, I put it to the side. Okay, great. I want to write a book. Okay, how's that? I'm going to write this book. Okay, I want to spend some time thinking about the concepts I want to include, the stories I want to include, how they're going to connect. Okay, then I'm going to set aside time to write, right? That may be a 60-hour project. I just wrote my book, and it, it really was, I think, 65 hours of all of it together. I put, I put it dialed in. And so I was like, 65 hours? I had it set for 70. I got it done a little bit early. And then on top of that, I'm like, all right, I want to, I want to make this app. All these little pieces. I, I take them and pull them apart and I look at the hours. Now, John, I go, why am I working in the first place? We're working to be able to spend time with our family, to have freedom, all this stuff. So what I do is I go back to my planner. I quite literally enter into my planner. Okay, great. Here's what I'm going to be mourning with, my, with the kids. I'm going to take them to school. In my, in my planner, it says, take kids to school like for a half hour. Then it has like breakfast with my wife. Then I may have dinner at three o'clock sometimes for, I cut it off. I am not working. I'm out of the studio. I'm done because I know it's important. Now what I do is based on all the areas of the big rocks, my workouts, my time with family, which really, if you think about it, isn't a ton. 
take the kids to school, spend an hour or two with my wife, right? Get a workout for 45 minutes. In a, a regular day, I still mm-hmm. got five to six hours, right? So now what I do is I go back and I highlight the areas across four weeks. I do four weeks at a time. And when I eat a week, I lead a week. And every weekend I do another week. So it's always four weeks out. And what I do is I say, okay, great. These highlighted spaces, I'm going to now infuse a project. It's going to be hour one of 15, two of 15, one of 65, two of 60. And I work it all the way through over four weeks. And what happens is now I have it blocked out and I'm a very protective of that four weeks. There are very few people I let enter into that space of what I've got planned out. If you go to my calendar now, like you can't book me for like four weeks because it's blocked out. I won't let you come in because I got to keep this vision. I got to say yes to what I've already said yes to. Because if I say yes to your new thing, I'm saying no to what I already said yes to right? So I keep this big boundary. But now what happens is here's the beautiful part, people. When I get to the point of now I'm working in my day, I'm breathing through the day, I call it. I'm breathing, not breezing, I'm breathing. I'm able to keep my breath. I stay under control and I move. And here's the key piece. When I'm working on project A, let's say I'm working on the book. If I'm working on the book right now, because I know when the book's going to get done for the most part, I know when every other project is going to get done. I'm not on the book thinking about the app, thinking about the coaching program, thinking about the kid. I'm not thinking about anything else. So I can stay hyper-focused and man, I get way more done in less time because I can be focused because I have presence and I have a confidence in knowing everything is where it's supposed to be. Even better, when I shut it down at three o'clock, I can be with my family. My coach in college said, be where you are, when you are. I'm not in the house thinking about work. I'm with the family because I know that's all set to take care of itself. It's going to be done as long as I show up to my time and I use my little egg timer that I have here that lets me make sure I'm, I'm all dialed in, right? I sit here. I don't move until that thing goes off. When I'm dialed in, I'm dialed. And now I get things done. And all of a sudden, we're rocking and rolling. So I hope that helps you guys get a perspective of like at least how my brain works. I have a lot I want to get done. But some of it's going to start in six months. Some will start in a year. I don't got to do it all right now. But here's a cool thing, like folding laundry. When one thing gets done, it creates space for the next thing. And all of a sudden, it's folded and smooth. Cool. Brilliant. Thanks, Anthony. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very welcome. Very welcome. This can be your day for personal growth. This can be that day you committed to and you remember and you go, that was the day I got myself a community. I got better coaches. I committed to making my life the absolute best that I could. This is that day. Make today your growth day. Click the button on this page and sign up right now.